Welcome to another video. This is an equation combining the ceiling function with the floor function with just a regular function. And we're supposed to find what x is. Remember, we're looking for this guy inside. The guy under the ceiling, on the floor, outside on the street, and everything added together is going to be 10.7. This is gonna be super easy. And because I wanna use this to explain the concept, I decided to choose the simplest form that you can get. It becomes more complicated when you move this two inside or when you start squaring the entire thing, then it becomes crazier, okay? But in order to know how to solve this when it gets more complicated, we're gonna solve this simple one, okay? And you can even look at this and guess the answer. If you just take your time and guess, you'll get the answer correctly. But in case you don't like guessing, like me, let's just get into the video. So we're going to start by just looking at what typically any number is written as. Remember, it doesn't matter what the number is, any number you write has an integer part and has a decimal part. Now, sometimes the integer part is zero and sometimes the decimal part is zero. Every number you write has an integer part and has a decimal part. So, every x you write. So note that every x is equal to k plus a decimal. I'm gonna write it as decim, okay? This is every number you write. So let's say you write the number two. It is two plus a zero decimal. If you write the number 7.5, it is seven plus 0 0.5. There's always an integer part and a decimal part. If you write 0 0.5, the integer is 0 and the decimal is 0 0.5. That's how you do it. So, if you look at the problem that we have, whatever comes out of a ceiling function is always an integer. Remember by definition, the ceiling of x is the smallest integer greater than x. So, if this was for example, the ceiling of this number is going to be 11 and the floor of this number is going to be 10. So this has given away, this example I just gave tells you that this is always the floor of X. And if you want to get the ceiling of X, you just need to add one to this because then you go to the next number. So the ceiling of 10.7 is 10 plus one. So the decimal part is converted into a whole number and you add it to the floor. Okay, so we can say generally, and that's what's gonna help us answer the question. The ceiling, the ceiling of X is equal to K plus one. What is this K again? It's this guy, always. And the floor of X is K for all x, okay? So the floor of x is k, the ceiling of x is k plus one, okay? Unless, so watch this, unless k is an integer. So here, we're saying k is not an integer because if k is an integer, it is its own ceiling and it is its own floor. So for example, the number seven, the ceiling of seven is seven, the floor of seven, is seven. Okay, so that's it. So the decimal part has to exist. It cannot be zero for it to be rounded up. Okay, so now we're saying generally if x is not an integer, let's write it here, then this is always true. Okay, if x is not an integer, this is always true. The ceiling of x is k plus one, 
the floor of x is k. With this explanation, just go here and solve it. So we can say that this can be written as 2 times the ceiling of x, which is k plus 1. Plus, what's this? The floor of x, which is equal to the floor of x is just k. Plus, what did we say x is? We said x is k plus some decimal, right? So it's going to be k plus. Now, this decimal, let's call it d. And our answer is going to be 10.7. So, if we simplify this side, what do we have? We have 2k plus 2 plus k. Oh, this is 2k again. Um, plus d equals, I'm going to write this as 10 plus 0.7. If we add all of these together, we're going to get 4k plus 2 plus d, the decimal part, equals 10 plus 0 0.7. So as you can see, there is only one decimal part on the left. There's only one decimal part on the right. So this decimal part must be this decimal part. And this integer part, because the sum of integers is always an integer. Okay? Remember that. The sum of two integers is an integer. It cannot suddenly generate a decimal. So we're going to say 4k plus 2 is equal to 10 and d is equal to 0 0.7. So let's solve this. We have 4k equals 10 minus 2, which is equal to 8. Ah, so we have k is equal to 2. And here we have D equals 0 0.7. Therefore, let's put our answer here. Therefore, X equals K plus D, which is equal to 2 plus 0 0.7, which is 2.7. This is the number that generated this equation. Now, I went into all these details because it's going to get crazier when we stop making this um, a square or you push the two inside or you double this or you quadruple this or you get something crazier on the right hand side so in order for you to see how everything works just remember this explanation that every x you write can be written as k plus d where d is the decimal part and k is the integer part which is always the floor and this is what determines whether you're going to add something or not. If, the, if this part exists, it's not zero, then the ceiling will have plus one. But if it is zero, then the ceiling of any integer is the integer and the floor of the integer is itself also. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.